Hello mis amores and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing great. I hope that you're having an amazing day. And today I welcome you back after a two week break. I'm so sorry I left you guys hanging last week. I wanted to enjoy my vacate. Wait, I uploaded a video last week. Oh yeah, so before that was the two weeks break. Anyway, I recorded last week's video before the vacation. That's why we had a bit of a break. But now I'm back, so I welcome you back. I'm already no longer used to filming. This feels strange, but it also feels good to be back. So let me not ramble all too much, but I do want to say I need another vacation. I haven't been on vacation in like five, six, seven years, which I know is still a privilege to be able to go on vacation, but it was also so necessary. And then I was sick the entire week, and so I didn't really have much of my vacation. So if I'm gone for another week at some point, that's probably the reason, even though I know it won't happen. <sighs> Today, we're gonna try and judge various one pot meals. I'm sure many, if not most, if not all of you have heard or seen videos of these one pot meals. It's usually pasta, but there are other types of meals that you can make in just one pot. So essentially, these kind of meals are supposed to be quick and easy because all you do is you take everything you've got, put it in one pot, and then it should be done. The ones I've chosen for this video need a little bit more work. We make everything in one pot, but we throw something in, then let it cook, and then throw some more stuff. You know, it's a little bit more gradual. It's not throwing everything in there, and then miraculously you'll have an entire meal done in no time. But I still wanted to try them and judge them. That being said, Let's go for the first one. This one I actually found on TikTok, then found out that it was basically just a copy of a New York Times cooking recipe without that person on TikTok ever really mentioning where they've got it from, which I just don't understand why it's so difficult to just credit the person or whatever you've got it from. Like, it's not that hard. So I'm not gonna mention the TikTok. I will only look at the recipe from New York Times that I will also link in the description down below. And that was so much talking, I'm sorry, but like, I've missed you guys. We have a lot of things to catch up on. Our first one pot meal is our one pot orzo with tomatoes, corn, and zucchini. All right, I just quickly got to water this sage on our balcony that we got from Naomi's mother because it seems to be kind of sort of dying. And then I'll start with the recipe and what you guys need for it. Okie smoky. Hand cam. You're gonna need three tablespoons of olive oil, one chopped onion, and about three garlic cloves, minced, salt, and pepper, <laughs> which I don't have here right now, but I think you guys know what salt and pepper looks like. One medium zucchini, two pints of cherry tomatoes, halved. I have no idea what pints is. I've never heard that before. I just took a couple of cherry tomatoes, half a cup of torn fresh basil leaves, plus more for serving. I just have a lot of basil here. I love basil. A quarter of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes, plus more to taste. I don't know, I'm not into like spicy stuff. I don't know how much of it I'm gonna add. Two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar vinegar, one tablespoon of tomato paste. This is probably more, but I like tomato paste. One and a quarter cup of orzo, about half a cup of sweet corn, one cup of torn or medium diced fresh mozzarella, and a quarter cup of grated parmesan. Mejan. <laughs> and with that, guys, you've got everything you'll need. Unfortunately, well, we're, 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 we're gonna be making it in a pan, in a pot. So we're gonna be making everything over there. You probably won't be able to see my face. Maybe I'll just freeze frame it and just insert it somewhere. So you guys will never forget my face. It's the onion, guys. I'm not actually crying. It's the onion. I mean, you can still see a bit of me right now. I need my olive oil because we're gonna heat the olive oil in a large skillet. I don't know if this is a skillet. Medium heat. Nice. Once this is warm enough, we can add the onion. I don't think this was warm enough. And now we lightly season it with some salt and some black pepper. Okay, once they're tender, I think we're gonna turn the heat to medium low and then add the zucchini and garlic as well. This isn't zucchini. There we go. And cook for about two minutes. 
Once the two minutes are over, you can add your cherry tomatoes, basil. I'm gonna add a lot of basil because I feel like a lot of basil would be really nice right about now. <laughs> You're probably wondering when will he stop? I don't know. This basil is making me so happy right now. A couple of red pepper flakes. Only a couple, okay? Then some more black pepper and some more salt. Some more salt. Okay. Now we stir occasionally until the tomatoes have completely collapsed. I think that is enough. We will add a bit of the balsamic vinegar and then also the tomato paste. Obviously, we're gonna let that cook for another two minutes. Once about two minutes have passed, we're gonna add two and a half cups, which is a little over maybe 600 milliliters of water. Over medium heat, we'll bring that to a simmer. Cool down simmer. Now that it's kind of slightly simmering, we can add the orzo. And also the corn. I don't really know what the corn is for. I feel like the corn doesn't really fit as of right now, but I like to be proven wrong. So we're gonna cover this now and let it simmer for 10 to 12 minutes, stirring and scraping the bottom of the pan three or four times until the pasta is cooked. Lighters. All right, all right, let's look. Oh, let's look at our creation. Ta-da! But we're not quite done yet because off the heat, we are gonna be adding the mozzarella. Let's shred it into pieces. I could probably add more mozzarella, but I don't like it too cheesy. And then also the parm. I'm so gentle. Do you guys like the sound it makes? Wow, this smells so delicious. Look at how cheesy this is, damn. We shall never forget some fresh basil on top. It's not like we don't have enough basil in there already. Now let's go for it. <laughs> no. Mm. That is good. Mm, mm, mm. And even though it involves pasta and also cheese, it still feels kind of light. This is like a nice summery meal, I think. I mean, I told you guys, I don't mind being proven wrong. In fact, I like it when I expect something not to be too good. The corn doesn't add anything. Maybe vitamins, I don't know. Flavor-wise and texture-wise, it doesn't really add anything. So I guess if I wanted to add something else, I would probably add something else. I could honestly eat this up right now. Mm, mm, mm. Let's celebrate this victory with an espresso. And a sweaty forehead. Are we ready for the next one, guys? This one might be a bit of cheating. No, actually it's not. It just happens to be something that is always really only made in one pot. Anyway, I'm talking about risotto. Risotto. I love a good risotto. <laughs> in my defense, though, I didn't search for risotto. I searched for one pot meals. Under that category on bbcgoodfood.com, I found this risotto. And I was really intrigued by this risotto because I have never had such a risotto. How often can I say risotto? Before. It is a zucchini and lemon risotto and I love lemon as you guys know I'm just gonna tell you what you'll need you're gonna need about 50 grams of butter Whee! this isn't 50 grams but I'll just take a little bit one onion finely chopped I swear this is fine fine enough one large garlic clove crushed two lemon thyme sprigs I've never heard of lemon thyme so I still don't know if there's a difference but we're just gonna say there isn't 180 grams of risotto rice one vegetable stock cube I don't have cubes I have this oh and now it's there. The zest and the juice of one lemon, 250 grams of courgette diced, 50 grams of vegetarian Italian style hard cheese. I'm using Parmesan, I know it's not vegetarian. And then the recipe calls for two tablespoons of crème fraîche, which I'm not gonna add that because I think that's cheating. I don't want to use any sort of this stuff or cream to make my risotto creamy and smooth. So if I end up not liking the recipe, My mother was like, hi, bye. 
So if I end up not liking the recipe, then it's definitely not because I did not add the creme fraiche. And with that being said, we're, we're gonna go over there again, and you're gonna have to say goodbye to the nice audio and just hopefully survive with this not so great audio. I could take a bigger pot, but I don't want to. Let's start by melting the 50 grams of butter in the pot. I'm not gonna lie to you guys though, it's kind of hard for me to follow a risotto recipe because if there's one thing I know how to make, honestly, it's risotto. But I'm just gonna do exactly what they tell me and if you think it's wrong, then don't blame me, blame the recipe. Once it has melted, we're gonna add the onion and let it fry gently until it's softened for about eight minutes. This is boring, see you later. After eight minutes, we're gonna add the garlic and stir that for another minute. Then we add the rice to our buttery onion and garlic and just stir that for like one or two minutes. I've got my veggie stock here and I'm gonna add a liter of boiling water to it. And we're gonna add a little bit of our stock to our rice until it is covered. Meanwhile, we'll also add our thyme. This is also the moment to add our lemon zest and also the juice later on. Risotto is a lot of stirring and not much else. We let this bubble over medium heat, stirring constantly. And when almost all the liquid has been absorbed, which is right now, we're gonna add another ladle of the stock and keep stirring. At some point, we're gonna add the zucchini as well. But basically, we just keep adding stock and keep stirring until the rice is cooked. All right, I'm impatient now, so I'm just gonna call it done. That being said, it actually is done. Here's my risotto. It smells really lemony in here. And to make it even smoother, we're gonna add our parmesan. We're also gonna eat this out of the pot because, duh, this is what we're here for, baby. This is what you came for. I'm just gonna take a scoop and I'm gonna wait 18 minutes until it's cooler. <laughs> mm, that is so nice. It gives me a really nice summery feeling. It's so flavorful as well. I would be fine with more lemon in it, but you still get the lemon and it's so good. But honestly, guys, You can make me happy with any kind of risotto, really. I mean, it has to be well made. So, clearly made by me. <laughs> taco, you need to smell this. Get into this taco. Do you love it? This is his I love it phase. I've got enough food for today and I've got two more recipes that I wanna try and I will for tomorrow. So see you then. Hello, Miss. I've done that already. It's just the next day. For a second there, I thought I was gonna have to film an entirely new video. Today, we're gonna make two more one-pot meals. Disclaimer for the first one. Technically, this could be made in one pot. You have to make that meal on the stove and then put it in the oven. And I'm not sure we have any pans and stuff that can also go into the oven. I'm then just gonna put it all in an oven dish. So technically, it's a two-pot meal meal but we don't care about like you could make it in just one. okay just a little disclaimer this one i have found on the tiki talkies and it is by tanya manotra we're gonna make a one pot halloumi bake essentially tanya said this is just her way of getting rid of all of the vegetables that are still in her fridge that are about to go bad and because this one seems to be more of a spontaneous recipe for her i also wanted to give it that vibe and so I didn't really go with any measurements that much like I looked at her measurements and I sort of kind of tried to go with the same measurements but I wasn't too strict about it is what I'm trying to say. All right and you're gonna need a bit of olive oil, one medium red onion chopped and five to six cloves of garlic. Onto the vegetables! Wow! Here I've got probably more than a cup of zucchini probably more of than a cup of eggplant probably more of a cup okay I'm gonna stop right here mushroom as well and bell pepper 400 grams of chopped tomatoes 130 grams of tomato paste one cup of spinach I'm gonna add more because I like spinach a bit of salt correct pepper oregano 
some chili flakes. Don't they look beautiful? <laughs> and then of course the star of the show. About 200 grams of halloumi. A tablespoon of spring on- This is not a tablespoon, Vincent. And a tablespoon of parmesan. We're just gonna add oil to the cast iron, which this is not that. And we're gonna start cooking our onions until they're lightly sautéed. Sa sauté, whatever. After a while, we're gonna add the garlic. And after that one minute, we're gonna add all of our vegetables. After 10 to 12 minutes, we're gonna add basically all of the rest. Chopped tomatoes, tomato paste, I guess almost the entire tube, salt, pepper, oregano, and a couple of chili flakes. We'll let that cook for another five minutes now. Before we put it into our oven dish, I'm gonna add some spinach. Now, let me just quickly pretend that it has all been cooked so far in this oven dish. <laughs> oh wow, look at that one pot I made all of this in. Last step, we're gonna place halloumi slices on top. And we're gonna sprinkle some of the spring onion and also some of the parmesan on top. Now we'll bake this at 200 degrees Celsius for 15 to 20 minutes or until the top of the bake is slightly charred or golden brown. Careful, 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 hot and greasy, hot and greasy. <laughs> That's what you say in German. Oi, 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 guys, get into that sound and get into what it looks like. I feel like a lot of y'all's mouths will water just looking at that. And I, I don't blame you. This looks delicious. Mm. <laughs> no surprise, this is really good. I think you can imagine the flavor just by looking at it, right? Once it's cooled a little with some nice baked bread, mmm, yeah. But yeah, see, I would put some fresh baby spinach on top instead of into the actual mixture, because that would just give another dimension of both texture and flavor and just a nice sensation in your mouth, I think. I gotta quickly make the last recipe so that I can devour this. The last recipe for today. This one is the epitome of a one-pot meal. This is exactly what I picture when I think of one-pot meals. Essentially, we throw a whole bunch of ingredients into a pot, put some water in it and let it cook, sit for a couple of minutes and then it's done. We're gonna make one of those from healthy girl kitchen on TikTok. It's an easy 15-minute plant-based dinner idea. 15 minutes plus the amount of time it takes you to chop up all the vegetables. But that's, you know, we never add that to the entire time of cooking, right? That's why everyone says, oh, cooking is so easy. It takes like two minutes. Yeah. But what about the 18 hours of preparation beforehand? Anyway, she calls it a Mexican quinoa bowl, which I think I knew it, but I've also learned by the comments there is nothing really Mexican about this. Quinoa is from South America. Also, apparently the ingredients that she puts in there aren't necessarily Mexican. So we're just gonna call it a quinoa bowl on this channel because I think it still looks very tasty and so I want to make it now. Without further ado, here's what you'll need. 180 grams of quinoa, 150 grams of bell pepper, 160 grams of tomatoes. Look, I've got orange and yellow ones. 210 grams of black beans, 70 grams of red onion, 150 grams of sweet corn, 120 grams of salsa. I just got this one from the supermarket. I hope it's tasty. Almost 500 milliliters of water, and then just some spices. So for example, salt, pepper, but also some chili powder, some garlic powder, and some paprika powder. Now that you know that, we're gonna move on over to the stove. This is so difficult. We're gonna add the quinoa, black beans, bell peppers, the tomatoes, red onion, sweet corn, and the salsa. Salt, garlic powder, chili powder, some paprika, and lastly, we're just gonna add the water. We're gonna let this simmer for about 15 minutes. We're done, guys! Look at our quinoa bowl. This is what it looks like now. It looks very moist and nice and just ready to be devoured by moi. It looks great. Mmm! 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 
What can I say? I just love all of these flavors. Guys, I cannot believe we only make great things. But can I just say I have a clear winner? Number four do, 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 are the Orzo one pot summary. What was it called again? This did not withstand the test of time. It's still nice. It's still good. I'm just really, really happy that I put that much basil in there because otherwise it would be a little flavorless. Number three is our quinoa bowl. Nice, good, easy. Number two. Tensions rising. What was this called again? Vegetable halloumi. I don't know. I love it. It's really great. I don't even have anything else to say about it. Except for the fact that the risotto is our number one. It's just, I love cold risotto. Don't come for me. But like, it just tastes so much better today than it did yesterday. It was great yesterday, but today it's so much better. They were all great. There's nothing else I can say. I'm really happy I did this video and I'd be even happier if you guys were happy watching this video. Because <laughs> I'm happiest only when you're happy. And I think you'd be happy if I finally let you guys go and finish this. So all that's left for me to say is thank you guys so much for watching this video. Y entonces nos vemos la próxima vez. Bye.